Thank you. My, uh, my name is Fernando Paredes, and I come from Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute. And um, first, I want to thank the co-authors whose implication was critical for this project. And today, I'm going to talk about the effects of dietary carbohydrate source on Florida pompano growth. Um, I'm going to start my introduction by uh, quickly acknowledging a few facts about aquaculture production. And first is a uh, fast growing industry and supplying like uh, over half of the total fish and sale fish for human consumption. Second, uh, a primary concern of aquaculture, of aquaculture production is cost. A cost that can go up to 50 to 60% of their operational, uh, of the total operational cost. In addition, uh, when we fish our feed, we want that feed, that feed to be healthy, cost-effective, environmental friendly, and nutritional well-balanced. But um, what do we mean by a nutritional well-balanced feed? And what is its a correlation to carbohydrates? Well, in a nutshell, what we mean by that is that when we formulate a diet for a specific species, we want the diet to have an accurate contain of protein, lipid, vitamins, and carbohydrates. Such a balance will um, determine the fate of those nutrients. And by fate meaning those nutrients will be converted to growth, to mass body waste, or use as a basic requirement. Carnivorous species like a pompano uh, actually has no specific requirement for any kind of carbohydrates. They can grow and survive uh, perfectly with fed diets without any carbohydrates. However, uh, when carbohydrates are not uh, included in the diet or the energy yielding nutrients such as protein or lipids are catabolized. And we do, not want, uh, we do not want this to happen. We want that our expensive protein to be utilized for mass growth and carbs to be utilized for basal energy requirements. And this is called a protein sparing effect of carbohydrates. Well, Florida pampano is an uh, important commercial and recreational species. Its uh, price, market price, in market price goes up to $29 uh, per pound. So it's a species that we may think about culturing. However, when we talk about carbohydrate metabolism, uh, when we talk about carbohydrate metabolism in Florida Palm, it's, uh, it's very poorly understood. We, there is like much that we do not know about this carbohydrate metabolism. And this metabolism apart is a species specific and among other factors, it uh, depends on the molecular complexity of the starch, on the amylopectin, amylose contain, content, the granular size and the starch source, which end up uh, yielding or responding to a digestibility absorption rate, better or worse. So uh, understanding the carbohydrate metabolism and how does it work will make us uh, choose an adequate carbohydrate source for any fish species and in our, uh, to our concern for pompano. So to this end, the purpose of our project was to determine a different carbohydrate source on Florida pompano growth, uh, focusing on weight, growth performance, gut microbiome, and liver transcriptomics. So the, to this end, we formulated five different diets, isonitrogenous, isolipidic, isocaloric, only changing the carbohydrate source. And we use whole wheat grain flour, whole corn grain flour, wheat starch, corn starch, and dextrinite corn starch. Uh, referring to the experimental setup, uh, the experiment consisted of an eight-week, 10-week uh, trials with a 12-hour light, 12-hour darkness, with a total of eight tanks with four replicas per tram. All treatments were randomly distributed along our tank setups. So finally, we get to the results. And uh, this graph shows the effects of different carbohydrate source on final weight during an eight week trials. Different color columns uh, correspond to different treatments. And if we focus in this graph, um, in the orange uh, um, column, we can see that from the, from, from, 
No, sorry, that's, a, that's, a, that, that, that's the other presentation. And uh, if we focus in the final wave, in, the t in week number 10, we can see that uh, uh, red color, orange, and purple has the highest weight. And those uh, columns refer to the fish fed with whole wheat grain flour, wheat starch, whole corn grain flour. So in conclusion, these uh, results suggest that um, Florida pompano holds an acceptance towards these three types of carbohydrates. Now getting into uh, the growth parameters, we can see that uh, all of them presented a good survival rate and the highest weight grain appeared in fish fed whole wheat grain flour and wheat starch. Better, best specific growth rate and feed efficiency appear in whole wheat grain flour, in those fish fed whole wheat grain flour. Uh, feed intake presented no significant difference, uh, probably indicating that the diet was nutritionally well balanced. In conclusion, we, from these results, we conclude that fish, uh, Florida pompano, has a better absorbent or digestibility for whole wheat grain flour probably because of the granular size is smaller and the amylopectin pentene is also higher. So the digestibility will improve by those two factors. Now getting in a, in a look into the gut microbiome analysis, we can see that um, the different color columns, stock columns rep color represent uh, different genera across all diets. And we saw no significant difference among all treatments. And um, this is a positive result. Uh, a decrease in diversity indicates uh, appearance of opportunistic or pathogenic species. Uh, the red color you can see is by far the great, has, a, has by far the greatest abundance across all genera and across all, I mean, I mean across all diets. And it corresponds to Vibrio. And we know that Vibrio produces Vibriosis, and, uh, which ends up in mortality by internal organ necrosis. But there are also several Vibrio species that have been reported to produce hydrolytic enzymes. Hydrolytic enzymes such as lipase, cellulase, ketinase, and to our concern, amylase. And therefore helping in the breakdown of the starch. And now, taking a look into the differential expressed genes, we found down-regulated and up-regulated genes, depending on the different treatments. And diving into that up-regulation of genes related to our concern to carbohydrate metabolism, we saw that there was an up-regulation in those fish fed whole wheat grain flour and corn starch. And those uh, upregulations relate to carbohydrate activities such as carbohydrate phosphorylation or glucokinase activity. Carbohydrate phosphorylation first, is the first step to glucose utilization and glycolysis. And glucokinase activity increase, is reported to increase in the presence of digestible carbohydrates. So fish has a response to different carbohydrates uh, sources, a physiological response that would help for the fish growth. In conclusion uh, our, of our project, so we can say that this is a, for the first time we have determined that whole wheat grain flour is an adequate carbohydrate source for Florida pompano, and also that gut microbiome holds an adaptability to different carbohydrate sources, and it seems to foster carbohydrate digestibility, and that differential expressed genes respond by up and down regulation to different carbohydrate sources. And that's on to thank all the people who participated at the University of Maine and the USDA ARS program. Thank you. Okay. So we have four minutes for questions. I'm told by a timekeeper. So go ahead. Main carbohydrate source, would that uh, improve like absorbance of other nutrients? You think like on the more like thinking grow out studies, uh, you know, like to, to improve their like weight gain? 
Yeah, so the question is that um, if we start formulating a diet with carbohydrates, with a whole wheat grain flour as the main carbohydrate source, will have an impact on growth uh, at the long run and help the new, and the absorbability of other nutrients. So um, regarding the absorbility of other nutrients, um, I don't think it will uh, it have, um, it will help, it will help in, in, in regards that the, fi the physiology of, of the fish will use that carbohydrate source for uh, energy-based cells uh, requirements and will allow uh, lipids or, or proteins to be directed specifically for growth or for other priorities. So if we have a good absorbance of the carbohydrates, uh, the fish will have the opportunity to redirect to growth whoever, uh, for whoever biological metabolism would use proteins or lipids. So it will do, it will do, it will. Any other question? Yes. Okay. Uh, Fernando, what is typically used in a commercial diet as a carbohydrate source? For in general or for pump, I know you mean. You pick. Uh, I mean, I think that it will depend on the, on the. Oh, yes. Uh, the question was, which was which, which is the common carbohydrate source used for the um, feed formulation, per, either for pompano or in general? So I think that question, I would answer that question um, referring to, uh, it's also species specific and it's also in terms of market, where av av availability of that product. So I guess for uh, USA would be wheat, uh, also a, a good, or corn, a good uh, source to, produce, to include into the diets. But as we see, if we compare corn to wheat, I would choose wheat as the adequate ingredient to include into our diets. Okay. okay. In terms of price, do you have any idea how it would impact on the manufacturing? Of using yeah. this specific carbohydrate? Well, uh, I don't know that, quite that, how to answer this question now. Probably, I will check it out after this conference. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.